The ReZero Season 3 Anime Expo premiere just happened this afternoon, and I watched it. I'm not going to mince words here, this is one of the best ReZero episodes I've watched from an adaptation standpoint. I'm not going to show any footage because, you know, you're not supposed to record in there, so I'll just try and put up relevant trailer footage. So, let's start with the great things about this episode and what it means for the rest of the season. I won't get into too many anime only spoilers, but it covers what you'd think. The gang gets invited to the Watergate city of Priscilla, and they run into every other gang, and shenanigans ensue for 90 minutes until things immediately go south. First things first, nearly every single thing visually about this episode is either on par with some of ReZero's best work, or even slightly surpassing it. No huge spoilers in this section, but the start of the episode is Subaru training in this parkour course, and also making use of his new sidearm, his whip. Not only was it really well paced, just like the rest of the episode, it was a fun scene, and for something so inconsequential to the overall series, it was also just really well animated. It's hard to gauge the animation for this episode because it covers volume 16 of the series, which is a much more conservative one, largely being people talking or set up for the rest of the arc. But what we do see in these little moments like Subaru's parkour, or just general everyday interactions between these characters, or Sirius's character acting, even if we don't have any big standout battles, we can tell that a lot of care went to some of these scenes. And while the general topic of animation is one of most concern for a lot of people when it comes to anime, I can't speak on that as a whole because it just wasn't that kind of episode. But besides animation, anime has a lot more to offer, and the ReZero episode delivers on every single front. I have praised the appearance of Season 3's character acting from the trailers, and the episode delivers on that even more than I ever could have expected. And if you're unfamiliar, character acting or character animation just refers to bringing them to life, and bring them to life the ReZero staff did. The little movements of Subaru and Betty's newfound tight-knit relationship, Betty moving around all impressed by herself and her yukata, the entire character of Sirius or Heinkel and Priscilla's entrance brings so much personality and life to these characters. A common criticism people have of anime is the character art. It's one of the most noticeable things outside of animation for a lot of people. And Season 2 struggled in this department for a lot of people, especially when it comes to keeping characters on model and looking consistent, but so far in Episode 1, they knocked this out of the park in literally every single shot. Of course, I only watched it once, but through every single shot, there was never a point of, oh, they look strange, or, oh wow, he looks funny. I did have some qualms before this episode about how wide characters' faces are, but when I sat down and got into the episode, it was just gone. I didn't care anymore. Everyone looked fine and fluid. Now, the biggest complaint ReZero got because of Season 2's struggling production specifically surround its, quote, people standing around talking, end quote, scenes. Which, to be fair, Season 2 did have a lot of, and because of the material Episode 1 adapts, this episode also has a lot of that. But its new style of direction never really leaves a dull moment. There's a scene where Subaru goes at night to talk with Rem about his day, and it never leaves a shot hanging for too long. It's always switching it up somehow, and at the end it cuts to the outside of the mansion, as you can see Subaru animatedly gesturing about his day to her with no sound. Any Pristella section is also full of such fun and inventive shots that make you excited to watch all of these standing around talking scenes. There's a part where Priscilla is with a new character, Liliana, and Subaru and Amelia walk up. Their conversation could be displayed by the camera just cutting between their faces, but it cuts to a far away shot behind a fountain that's periodically spraying water and cutting up the shot in unique ways, as well as distorting whatever's behind the water. It's scenes like that that I can't help compare to the beauty of Season 1. Also, before people bitch about it, yes, this episode had CGI for literally like 4 seconds, and it was completely passable, and did not stay on screen for long, and the director actually spoke about the series' upcoming use of CG to help with such ambitious shots. CGI is not an inherently bad thing, and this can be completely fine. Do not shit your pants immediately, please go watch Girls Band Cry, it was an anime this season that was only CG and it was great. I think that's about all I have to say for the visuals. Has ReZero looks better? Possibly marginally? But this episode was peak ReZero in terms of visual presentation. Everything about it was as it should be. The new voice actors all do an incredible job, Liliana's singing voice is better than I could have ever expected, and her scenes were effectively gaslighting me into enjoying her on-screen presence. Heinkel and Sirius also kill it, of course Heinkel's VA is an industry vet at this point, and Sirius had some big shoes to fill considering the other Saint Archbishop in ReZero, something the director actually touches on in an interview at Anime Expo where he mentions that Petal Juice left some big shoes to fill that some of the voice actors feel a little intimidated by, but Sirius did an incredible job with a frequently changing vocal inflection that makes you feel like you never know if she's neutral, elated, or pissed off. I can't speak much on the OSTs because you don't really get a feel for them in a setting like that, but I do believe that there were some new tracks during the Sirius scene as well as the Wilhelm and Subaru Moonlight talk that fit the mood perfectly, in my opinion anyway. But I'm not really an authority on music, so sorry. A bit of a spoiler on the end of the episode here, but the chilling silence as 
Sirius drops Luz Ball to his death, his face hits the ground, and Subaru's head explodes was a fantastic way to end this 90 minute slice of life episode. And to make Subaru's first return by death in a year hit so hard as he crouches down to repeat how sick he feels. And then we get hit with the title card, Theater of Malice. Okay, at this point, I'm going to get a bit into novel territory. I'm not going to spoil huge things, but anime only is beware at this point. More specifically talking about the narrative, there are quite a few things I liked and a couple I did not. First, they have made it clear that they are paying very close attention to even the little details of this adaptation going forward. You have a direct mention of Pristella being designed as a trap. You have Hoshin lore where Subaru is like, oh yeah, that dude definitely got isekai And you have shots like Ezo being included in the felt camp despite the fact that three people who watch this episode will even know who that is. Which kind of brings me to my next point, that it's really cool and good to want to focus on those little story details, but it feels contradictory to then not re-include crucial story details that were cut that had perfect layups to be reintroduced here. Al shows up, but with no flashback or anime original scene mentioning the massive lore revelation that he was isekai The next opportunity then would be sometime in Volume 17, when Subaru is with him and Ferris after Subaru's leg gets ripped off by Regulus. The second detail would be Wilhelm's wound from Teresia, which could have very easily been brought up in the discussion with Subaru under the moonlight, but just wasn't, for some reason. This can probably be brought up later, but you kind of lose the foreshadowing tax you garnered by bringing it up so much earlier, especially because Teresia's divine protection is not totally irrelevant to Arc 5 as a whole. They also cut the scene of Julius informing Subaru that Heinkel is suspected of being involved in the kidnapping of the royal 15 years ago which is now the first time the anime only is here about that event, uh, but they still don't know what's felt, and now they don't even know Heinkel was involved. This hasn't been plot relevant yet to my knowledge, but surely that would never backfire. I appreciate the care for the narrative details going forward, but we shouldn't leave such important ones behind in that attempt. Hopefully these things get re-added later and are entirely left on the cutting room floor. One of my questions was how they would handle the Subaru and Liliana reunion considering their first meeting was any side story, and the anime opts to take the web novel approach to it which is not something it usually does at all. And it makes it so Subaru and Liliana do not know each other. This is honestly fine, because that side story is largely irrelevant, and we don't need to confuse anime onlys for the sake of it, more so than they already are confused. Kiritaka was almost cut entirely from this episode, and I am so serious when I say that Volume 16 in one episode might have saved this anime. The director made it clear at Anime Expo that this was a decision he pushed for so that people could proudly say that Rizio is back, and end the first episode with a bang, and it was a massive success in my opinion. Padding more time with noted Epstein associate Kiritaka would have benefited nobody, and if other things were cut, I don't remember them, because Volume 16 spent a long time having fun making pedophile jokes and making Kiritaka one of the most obnoxious ReZero characters in history, if memory serves me right. I know a lot of you are salivating for official Arc 6 confirmation, and in that interview I keep referencing, the director mentions it without naming it. He makes specific mention that there are two halves of the season, with the second half being about making the best out of a bad situation with limited resources, and that the second half is more of a return to the roots of ReZero. That is pretty clearly Arc 6. All in all, this episode was genuinely fucking incredible, and despite some minor hangups I have over narrative decisions that could be rectified later, I have no complaints. It looks beautiful, sounded beautiful, and made me feel something again. The new director inspires great hope, and that's about it. Thank you so much for watching. If you like this video, please remember to like, comment, and subscribe for the funny YouTube algorithm. You can also become a YouTube member, which gives you access to behind-the-scenes content, a badge on comments and livestream chats, as well as the use of emotes and videos before their actual release. You can also check the description for socials like Twitter, where I'm objectively correct all the time, and Discord, where we talk about ReZero, My Hero Academia, Jujutsu Kaisen, and stuff like that. That's about it, though. Thank you for watching. See ya.